Greetings, ladies and gentle readers. I'm Dwyer, and I just finished reading Flight of the Sharon, Elven Worlds Part, or Elven Worlds 2, sorry. Now, right away, I read the, these two back-to-back, -back, so I'm going to be reviewing both of them. I read this one and Order of Sharon, which is one. Now, I'm going to try to remain relatively spoiler-free while I go over this and just give you my impressions of the series so far. So right away, uh, you can see it's about 400 pages for book two and about 400 pages for book one. So they're not really huge slogs. You will also might note that the first book of the previous six book series, Path of a Novice, the Sylvan book one, uh, was 254 pages. Now, I have to say I absolutely love R.K. Lander's series that she's got rocking here. And hey, she even has her name and her own actual picture there. So, you know, they're a real person and all that stuff. Fantastic. They're sticking by their writing. And it shows. Because, yeah, the first series was great. This one takes place after... I'm trying to avoid spoilers here. After the events in the first series, um, you've got, obviously, the main character from that one coming back in this one. But not quite in the same way as all we're going to say about that. What makes this writing and the series very interesting more than a lot of uh, other writings, more than a lot of, let's say, lit RPGs and cultivation novels that I've been reviewing a lot of lately is this focuses not only on like the world uh, that they're in, the sites of the worlds that are in, but it's also the interactions, the rather deep interactions between the characters in the books. And that's what really makes it because everything like has context. If something happens, there are other characters that are actually feeling lifelike in the world, and something that happens is usually in context with another character in some form or another. Hard to avoid spoilers with that sentence, but I think I managed it. So you have context and meaning for the characters with the actions taking place when something bad happens to one of the characters. It's not because like they've introduced them here and then bam, something bad happened to them immediately afterward with no buildup. There is buildup. So the rare times that something bad does happen to a character, you actually feel what the characters are going through because there's been buildup leading to what's actually happened. And that's fantastic. All too often, a lot of lower tier writers don't have buildup. They just try to immediately have that payoff and it's always unearned and falls flat. Unfortunately, a lot of readers aren't very mm, I shouldn't say they're not very smart. Let's just say they're very easily pleased with very um, shallow and materialistic writing. Uh, materialistic might be the wrong word. Definitely shallow writing is definitely the right word, though. Which is why you have some of those writings having thousands of reviews when this one, which is just like deeper and more interesting in like every way, is currently rocking 120. Very, very unfortunate. I think the current meta of writing isn't to build up to something, to have a payout for your time invested in following characters. I think it is very much just instant gratification of being told things are happening then something happens and then something being told something else is going to happen and then like having that happen immediately uh which is unfortunate because really really good works here which i completely recommend if you're into fantasy i completely recommend this author 100 percent hands down can't recommend them enough because authors like this just aren't for whatever reason getting the interest that they absolutely deserve now part of that immediately is going to be because you would be tempted to be like, oh, 120 ratings this is probably not catching on. It must be a bad book. I think part of it is just SEO, search engine optimization. Like no one, how many people are searching Flight or, or Sharon in anything they type in in fantasy? Comparatively, like if you're looking for a lit RPG, lit RPG appears in the title. Congratulations, you get it. Iron Prince, people are usually looking up uh, royalty in fantasy. So king, queen prince gonna come across that word uh so we see that good search engine optimization for a title i think this one 
suffers from a lack of search engine optimization. It's probably hard for readers to come across Flight of the Sharon or Order of the Sharon. And so they probably go a little bit, a little bit more under the radar. Uh, but yeah, so this does. So what is this series? Well, this one again, main character pops into here. There's some friends from the first one that carry over to this one. He doesn't have all of his memories for a reason I'm not going to go into, and he has to struggle to recover that. And the new reality he now has to wrap his brain around. And a lot of this series, because of how... Because of how... Mm, because of how things ended and how this one began, a lot of this is the main character having only like half an understanding of who he is. And that half of understanding is like very, very violent because the first... The first books, right? A bit of a war, right? You do some pretty weird crap in that. So when you only have like bits and pieces of your memory, you remember like, oh my god, I've killed people. Like, what kind of a monster am I? So he kind of has to come to grips with like part of his memories and who he is, what that means for him going forward, who does he want to be like from now. And it goes into some pretty dark places while they explore... Uh, the morality of some of his choices it's 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 good i love it I, I i love that little twist on it how it's getting like really into the motivations of the character finding out like who they are while a new threat is appearing on the horizon and he has to get back into fighting order it's just it's just fantastic i haven't read a book like this that i can put my finger on like i can't say oh yeah it's just like I don't remember. I, I don't remember. I, I can't think of one off the top of my head. I cannot at all. So if you want a really great read, yeah, R.K. Lander, you can definitely get into her work. You will not go wrong with Path of a Novice or the, the, the Sylvan. I loved all six books of those. I love that it's continuing with Elven Worlds. We're just learning more and more about the world she's created, the characters that she's created. And I hope some of the people who really stuck with the series, like 800 reviews, 1,000, 2,000 reviews, I hope they take up this one as well. Because this is still fantastic, and I can't recommend it enough. If you want a book containing elves, humans, dragons in a way that you've probably never read before, this is what you're looking for. This is absolutely what you're looking for. Go start the series. I recommend starting with the first one. Can't go wrong. You'll love it. Just be aware, not only are you going on an action-packed journey, but because of some of uh, the introspection and character analyzing that does go on in here, you're also going to probably go on a little bit of an emotional journey. So, yeah, can't recommend it enough. Go grab it. Read it. You'll like it.